So we are back for episode two of Full Bore on Tour, and it hasn't taken us very far this time. We are at our home base, Elite Physique, in Manchester, and today we are joined by Mr. Joe Cross and Mr. Johnny Mack, two of our top performing men's bodybuilding athletes who've both had phenomenal bodybuilding seasons and have the same goal in mind. Um, I wanted to bring them in to show you exactly what they do from a nutrition point standpoint, a training standpoint, uh, and a supplement standpoint, because these two guys are very different. They both hold a lot of muscle, and I wanted to sort of demonstrate there's more than one way to skin a cat, as we know. So I'm gonna just introduce you to Joe now. He's gonna tell you a little bit about himself. We're gonna do a back session as well, so we'll get to see Big Johnny lift some big stuff, and Big Joe do some mad volume stuff, I think, yeah, anyway. We'll, we'll, we'll find out. I certainly won't be lifting quite the deadlift that, that Johnny might do, but we'll, uh, we'll, we'll see what happens anyway. But the, the, I guess the whole thing of what we're trying to get at with this is there's more than one way to skin a cat. And, you know, looking at what we are doing, um, you know, me and Johnny both trying to get to the same goal. Ultimately, you know, we're both going in for an IPB Pro card in the near future. Probably Johnny before myself. He was closer this year um, and myself in maybe two years. So, you know, a year or two between us. Um, but... The big thing is, is like how our philosophy sort of contrast um, and how we get from A to B while still having the same goal in mind. Um, obviously, myself, I'm not going to lie, I'm an OCD freak with everything. Um, you know, not saying that Johnny doesn't fall everything to a T, but from a supplementation standpoint, if you look behind us, like this is probably my my morning regime. Like every single supplement on the shelf will, will be in my uh, my morning self. To be quite honest with you, um, so it, it's one of them things where. At the end of the day, you know, that's just the way I am. I, I can't change that, and Johnny's the way he is, but we both look a certain way and we're both trying. Um, you know, and then kind of skipping through, you know, to the training standpoint, it's it's a crazy thing how, you know, my philosophies are a lot more volume-based um, and Johnny just rips stupid weights off the floor. And that's why he looks the way he does. And, yeah. he, you know, and I've got to learn from, you know, what Johnny looks like. He's got an immense amount of density on his physique. Um, and I've got a lot of detail. And I think, you know, we can both learn a lot from, from one another in training philosophies. And I think this is the, the beauty of the sport in itself. And, you know, as athletes, like learning from one another, um, you know, I don't have to copy what other people are doing, but picking up certain traits, certain things, um, and taking that into my training, just kind of putting together in like a synergistic fashion. And, and this is what we're trying to do. And inevitably, no plug but full ball will help us that supplementation because recovery is absolutely king well performance and recovery um, and before I pass you on to John I'm just going to give you a little shout out here to uh, the FPS new clothing full ball sports man so we've got obviously the hoodie here we've got the jumper here and the oversized t-shirts over there so I must admit <laughs> that they are very fresh and I'm even going to give you a quick twist of the uh, oh, the embroidery that. on the back the so plug of all plugs. the plug of all plugs but you know very smart amazing brand so just, just putting it out there. Thanks, Joe. So I'll uh, I'll I'll pay you later. Pay, give us that, give us that <laughs> tenner later, Rob. That extra pump and focus <laughs> is coming your way. So, uh, yeah, I'll pass you over to Johnny just to kind of run through him. But, um, you know, very good season for yourself, wasn't it? And uh, sort of, uh, yeah, well up there. There we go, sir. Here he is. So, um, hi, I'm Johnny. Um, sort of following on from what Joe said, um, obviously there is many different ways to do things. I've always stuck to my ways. Um, I just like to lift heavy. <clears throat> uh, with lifting heavy for reps, it's going to build that dense density um, that I'm looking for on stage. Definitely going to help me progress from a heavyweight to a super heavy, which is uh, my goal for this season. Um, I think we can all learn a lot from each other. So obviously coming down here today, I'm ready to try some new training methods with Joe. Um, yeah, so I think between us today, we'll probably, we haven't even got a plan together, but we're just going to, you know, put put some things together. You know, I'll, I'll probably end up being roped in some form of deadlift <laughs> or rap pull. Not, not that I want to, because my back pumps are horrendous right now. Um, and then, you know, I'll, I'll put Johnny through some, you know, volume stuff for pull downs, rows, that side of things as well. So, yeah. you know, we'll, we'll kind of put it together and, and see if it sticks and see which we like. And I'm going to observe, no fun watching me. <laughs> this is it. These uh, big compound lifts, like deadlifts, they do build a certain density and thickness to your physique, um, but obviously the detail in Joe's physique from volume and um, just controlling the, the movements is, is, is also highly beneficial. Um, I could definitely learn a lot from Joe, so looking forward to that. 
Yeah, no, it, it will be good, and I'm, you know, I'm looking forward to because you know, as well with what Johnny's saying with like the heavy movements, success leaves clues, and you know, you only got to look at the biggest bodybuilders in history. You know, they're not powerlifters, but they all move stupid weight for reps. So you know, it's it, sometimes it's not about reinventing the wheel; it's you know, following what other people have done, learning from that, um, and and just taking it forward. So yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to, to getting stuck into it, and uh, hopefully we'll we'll be able to get a leg session in as well, where I, I'll be able to keep up a little bit more than because deadlifts just ain't my bag. But I do need a denser back, so I yeah, I gonna gas, to, uh, gas after two sets with you. I think he does a lot more reps than I do. So yeah, we, are. We'll, uh, we, we will certainly uh, certainly find out. So as we're going through the session, we'll sort of you know come out in and out of the session, um, explain a little bit about what we're doing, what techniques we're using, um, and that side of things. And then at the end, we'll probably wrap it up. Um, hopefully, I won't be an A and E, and I'll, I'll, my, back, my back will be intact. Um, but other than that, we'll get to it, and uh, we will see you on the other side. I drink the majority of it sort of 20 to 30 minutes prior to training. So what this is trying to do is load the blood with um, nutrients. And obviously when the blood's loaded with nutrients, we're going to take advantage of when we're pushing blood to the working muscle, we're going to have an increase in nutrient uptake. Um, and I'd rather load the blood with nutrients before. Um, and also whilst we're actually training, you know, your digestion is great because the blood's in the working muscle. Um, so that's why I like to take it um, like sort of pre-workout slash intro. Um, so with the carb drive, We've got glutamine, it doesn't really have to be in trouble, it just makes me remember to have it. Um, an essential amino acid, what you want to be looking for here um, is a good essential amino acid profile ahead of a BCA, so it's got all essential aminos. Um, realistically, you're looking between like three and five grams of glucine to make sure we're promoting muscle protein synthesis. Um, reason being, uh, an essential amino it's going to stimulate muscle proteins more other than just um, BCAs, which is isoleucine, leucine and valine. Um, and then alongside that, we'll take creatine um, just to sort of promote, obviously, recovery, um, but also for actual performance in terms of production of ATP. So for me, having this sort of stacked together, it's just massively advantageous for recovery, performance, hydration, um, and then it doesn't mean you've got to rush straight into your post-workout meal. So it helps sustain blood sugars throughout training and um, help promote recovery. Following on from Joe, um, I basically do the same thing, but I will take out the creatine and the glucamine, and I will have a good carb source, an EAA, and Hydromax. So the Hydromax is going to help me uh, with my back pumps uh, throughout my session. So that's it. I'll probably add a gram of low salt in with that, and a splash of coriol, away we go. So with this one, what we're trying to do is like warm up the lats to start with. So we're trying to pull the elbow down towards the hip and really fully to shorten the, uh, the lower lap. Obviously when we start getting fatigued, it's going to get harder and harder to fully shorten that lat. So I like to do something that's really going to isolate the lat to start with. So when we go on to the pull downs, the rows, your lat's already activated, it's already firing. So then we're going to put more emphasis when we do the pull downs through the lats it's already been pre-exhausted so naturally your mind's muscle connection will be better and also we're going to hit more lap fibers. take one individual set there, the less volume in the session you need to do. But people who haven't got the ability mentally to like hammer themselves in a set, then they're gonna need four sets. It's like you if I give a, a program to a beginner, I won't give two sets because they won't learn out of it, because they need more two sets of dumbbells where they're not really failing, you can do for four. Whereas two sets of all that fail like you do, they'll trash you. So it's big That's the it, big difference, it? like the the it's kind of contradictory. You think the further or more experienced you are as an athlete, the more volume you need. But really, the more you can put into one set, the less you but need. Yeah, because it's all about one. making sure that basically whatever you're doing, you can recover from it. So if you only used to do 10 sets of deadlifts, it's not going to benefit him anymore. It's just going to trash him so he can't recover. So it's finding that sweet spot where you're maximizing the level of volume that you're doing 
whilst also making sure the recovery aligns. And obviously that, that recovery factor is constantly evolving. You know, are you on cycle? Are you in a prep? How many calories you want? What drugs are you taking? What supplements are you on? It's a constantly moving goalpost. You just need to make sure that you're always reviewing your own personal recovery and the recovery capabilities because me and Johnny will have completely different recovery capabilities for so many reasons. So you know it's all all very personal dependent. Like, trying to really emphasize that extreme range so it's properly like feeling that stretch where a lot of people will go to like here and then straight back down so he's pausing in that stretch feeling the stretch for his last and then when it's coming down contracting and that's what people forget like imagine you're hitting a pose on stage like you're contracting your back so what you're trying to do here is contract you need to think about replicating the pose and not just moving away from you gotta get the, the most out of the movement is yeah. what it is Stretch and squeeze. Yeah, it seems literally that, yeah. I know I slam weights around. Things like this, it's all about getting a full stretch. Yeah. Squeeze, think of think about where you're hitting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and actually, yeah, actually trying to feel it. Yeah. At the end of the day, you know, it doesn't we could put another three, four plates on here and just rag it about, but your actual lap development is gonna be far, far less. So you're trying to work the, the muscle through the entire range, so the fully stretched position to the fully shortened. If you can hit a muscle for its entire range of motion then you're naturally going to hit more muscle fibers. This the one then? First working set, so I'm running for about eight to ten. Big set now. What we're going to do with this is going to do what I call ten plus five. So we're going to do ten continuous reps with a bit of left as a squeeze. So just move in the way, stretch, squeeze, stretch, squeeze. Less isometric contraction. One with a bit about ten reps of failure. We're going to drop a plate off. And then we're going to do five reps in a three second hold. So what this is trying to do is combine continuous tension with heavier weight, with then going into isometric. So really squeezing. So kind of getting the best of both worlds out of these times. Yes, so what? Why this one with that? The ones. Plus ten out. The ones. Good. Good. Keep that like that. It's the boy! Now we're doing five reps in three seconds squeeze. Just count one second, we're doing two reps. Come on then, let's work. One, two, three. Uh, These are the ones. Yep! One, two, three. Oh, come on! 
Let's fucking work for this then. One, two, three. Come on. Release the boy. Come on. One, two, three. Come on. Fucking heavy fan of you. Come on. Just get 10 to 12, nice and nice and smooth. Continue. Full stretch. And then now. Good. Hey. Good. <laughs> hey. Two more, hey. two more again. Twelve. Hey. Move it. Yeah. Hey. Good. I'll get two off that, I think. Five new reps, you better. Right. Well, I think about this. One rep at a time. Stretch. Yeah, buddy. Good track. Come on. Come on. Cool. Five reps. One, two, three, good. <laughs> Squeeze your lats. Down, down, one, two, three, good. Come on, three reps. Yep, here we go, keep moving, down, 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 three, two, one, yes. Two, two. All the way, all the way, all the way. Good. Last one, last one. Right, wait now, pull this up, pull this up, pull this up. Right now, right now, five, four, three, last two, one, good. So exercise number three, I've just supported a uh, T-bar row. So obviously the first two exercises were a little bit more lat focused. So obviously pull over for lower lat, sort of pull down, focus on like the thickness of the lat. So for this for me, depending on how you set it up will depend on where we're trying to emphasize. And when people train back, I think a lot of the neglected thing is like knowing that your back is made up of multiple muscle groups. So we don't want to just be hammering the same angle every single time. We want to be making sure we're hitting every little bit of the back. So it's made up of so different but many body parts. So. What I want to do with this is, for me, put the foot plate quite low. So what we're imagining is the arm position is coming to the chest and not down towards the hip. So obviously, if we're coming down to the hip, we're going to bias the lat, but they're already quite pre-exhausted. So I'm having the foot plate quite low, and I'm coming in to here. So we're going to hit a lot more upper back, lower trap area, so sort of the real thickness from the top of your back. Because like I said, you know, if we hadn't done any lats at first, I might put the foot plate up and do down to the hips. But you know, the two lat based things, so now we're going to be to hit in a little bit more of the upper back. as possible realistically um, so you know this this top set because it is quite heavy it's trying to move the weight to be fair and then on the back off I might control it have a bit more of an actual contraction uh, but for this just going to try and overload the back and just fucking move some weight a bit like Johnny <laughs> come on then yep three two yep come on three. here he is Yes! Yes!
But now we're going on to a unilateral movement. So one arm at a time and really focusing on like that contraction now. So for me, I'm going to do this standing and I'm really going to focus because for me, my like weak point on the back is like a lower lap lift miss. So I really want to think about here, I'm standing up, one foot here, and drive this elbow down, right down towards the hip. I'm really trying to contract. I'm not like rotating and shifting the weight. All I'm doing is thinking about driving this elbow down towards the hip, so there's going to be no external rotation of the body. Um, getting no momentum, no leverage, just literally pulling down towards the hip and trying to isolate that lower lap. So, now we've done the pull downs and the, uh, the throws, we're moving on to uh, like a hinge movement. So, we're doing with rat pulls today. Johnny likes his dead, but I'm, I'm about a rat pull. I'd rather isolate my back a little bit more. So, my preference for rat pulls is one to do them at the back end of a session. Um, and the reason being, this is where we kind of contrast. Like, Johnny will do it at the start. Obviously, you can overload the muscle more, you're a bit fresher, you're not as fatigued. But for me, now I've pre exhausted my upper back, I've done rows, pull downs, pull overs. When I hit these, my muscle connection, I can connect a lot better with my upper back. So this isn't just about building my lower back, this is me thinking about building my whole density top to bottom of my back. And I actually do these snatch grip. He says they're not snatch grip because I've got, I've got T Rex arms, so they're short. But. <laughs> Um, the wider your grip is, the more range of motion. So we're going to be going further down because your grip's wider. And obviously you can retract your scapula more, so naturally we're going to hit more upper back, more traps and more lats. So we're thinking, this isn't just for lower back, this is about moving weight for density, top to bottom. Yeah, so I'll see how it's wider, Joe, on it. Um, see how it's from itself. To start the session, you're, you're fresh. Um, you've got a, not just a, uh, uh, physical fatigue, but you're sort of mentally ready. You go in, you bear to the door, you want to yeah. get to it. So, for me, while I'm ready, ready to go, I'll go in that. I just hitch weights off the floor, that's how I train. Um, whilst I'm on prep, my food's a bit lower, I will move to these movements, as Joe said. So, you're going to get a better connection uh, with your muscles, and that's re really. Prep, you're trying to etch out the details and get more engagements through, your, through the complete range of your back. You're not just moving weight A from A to B. Yeah. Well, my food tie will come in and hit it at the start of the session, but obviously today, slightly different layout. But oh, we'll give it a go and uh, see, how, see how we get on. Snatch grip, close, get under the bar. Pinkies. Um, so this you, you definitely sit sit into the movement more. Whereas with a deadlift, you, you tend to hit hitch. And it's all lower back. So with this, you can engage more of your lats. Uh, benefits, pros and cons to both. Yeah, yeah it's, not, it's definitely pros and cons to both. But what one of the things that I found as well personally, I think when me and Robbie train, like we're doing deads and racks at the start. And yeah, like we got more out of that single long movement, but my mindset towards programming, this isn't just for back, this is across the board, is how can I get the most out of every single movement? And the problem was with these, because they are so fucking taxing, if you do more than one set, then your rows get affected, your pull downs get affected, <laughs> as Johnny touched on. It's not just physical fatigue as well, like you're mentally quite fatigued going into the rest of the session, your central nervous system is fried. So I found that to get the most out of every single exercise, I actually got more by putting these at the back end. So, you know, if there's more than one way to do it, like I've just shown, but find the way that works for you, really. Definitely takes a different breed to do this at the end. Go in on it, yeah. it?
We are like these are my favourite invention bear grips. Unlike the conventional wraps that you like wrapping around, these are so much easier to grip. Um, and like someone's just asking me the question, like why would I bother using them? And for me, like I'm not trying to train my forearms or training back, I'm training my back. So there's one less thing to think about. I can actually activate my back so much better by not bothering um, just using their hands. So I'll use straps on absolutely everything, pull downs, even stuff I wouldn't even need the grip strength on, not just like deadlifts. Just because I finally get a more better mindset connection. And when I'm doing drop sets and stuff, these are better than the conventional wrap because instead of wrapping it up, it just lets you grip straight in and then grip off the floor. So it's a lot easier for my sense. What's the weight in the bar, Johnny? Hey, what's the 300. Seven, seven plates, man. Fast as fuck. Put me down, man. 300 kilo. <laughs> yeah. That's why I'm rats. We actually come, come out of a Ronnie Coleman. I don't really shit. How many? Yeah. 10, 10 to 15. As soon as it's moving, it don't stop. That's when when I say my intensity. Yeah, I do the first so many, and then get into a groove. And saying about Joe's, obviously, got his ways that are effective and get maximum intensity. For me, if this is at the start of a workout, and I've got seven, seven and a half, eight plates, you don't stop. Try and get the most out of that set. Once it's moving, don't let it stop. But that's, that's me. Yeah. When you rack a, a seven or eight plate lift on the floor and you've got to get it moving again and again every rep, I think, you know, like actually just fucking. I, I think that there comes a point with some mech sizes, like if this isn't a pull down, it's not a rope. When you've got a shitload of weight on a bar, you just got to keep moving them, you've got to keep attention. And I actually think it's probably safe. So, oh yeah, fucking like when you stop it going, getting that instant fucking that instant bite on your lower back, so it's just keeping the tension in there. So uh, I think it's a good shout, it's just getting in that, that rhythm. And I think you can control your aggression a lot better with that, just fucking go, go, go. So we'll see what happens. Hey. Holy shit, you, you kit and your rack before you start lifting. I'm not used to a rack. So you stab to here, the catching bands. And uh, I had no idea they were there. So as you come down, you're hitting the band, hitting the, the tab for the bands. Threw me off a little bit. It's literally doing that, like, you've seen it from behind. It's back right side was hitting it first, it was like fucking wobbling all over. So, but a good sign that he knew he was deadlifting right. Look at his shin. It's always a, it's always a good sign that you put in the bar close up to your legs. I did bring deadlift socks as well. That's annoying, that. 
makes me look like you've got form, but I wanted 10 as well, but I've got a good excuse why my biceps are shit. Every off season, I get the worst. I don't even know what it is, I've, I've tried everything. Chirotherapy, deep tissue, shockwave therapy, pulsing. Yeah, like if you look at my hand position naturally, my hands are rolled in. So it's a supinate that puts so much pressure in this tendon here. So all my exercises at the minute are where, so how you want to do like select vice exercises like personal dependent if you want it biomechanically suited to you otherwise you're going to put too much tendon uh, pressure for your tendon for your forearm so because my arms are naturally like this I want to be curling like this whereas anything where I supinate too much and curl I only feel the tendon so it's about thinking about how you biomechanically set up and the easiest way to think is how do my arms sit naturally without doing anything and stuff like this so I want to be naturally curling inwards Whereas to go like this, I can already feel that like pulling up the tendons without even having the weight. So to put more weight on this, it's going to make it work. So for me, I've learned the hard way. Curling straight bar curls, stupid heavy, 80 kilo. When I'm a different young lad, it does nothing for me over the back of the tendon. So I think the biceps, you know, exercise selection is very key. Um, you know, we put a lot of tension through the biceps doing like upper back work and stuff like that. This now is just trying to really isolate them put in in like a biomechanically disadvantaged position um, so we're just using like quite a small load and really concentrate on the muscle. So that session is wrapped up, post work is going to go down in a minute. So over to Mr Fulbore himself to tell us what has come up in the series. So episode two done with these two gents. If you like what you see, like and then subscribe to the YouTube channel as well. Uh, next episode three coming up will be IFB Pro uh, Becky Dean training with Liv Brownson. And they're going to put me through one of their grueling bikini sessions, which I'm sure we're tough. The good yeah. girls actually train hard. They train yeah. harder than me. <laughs> they train harder yeah. So. But yeah, if you like it, then please subscribe. If you've got any suggestions, let us know what you want. Also suggest, yes. <laughs>